Hi, my name is Grace Lambert, and my group members are Skyla and Matthew. We are junior Carroll College nursing students, and we did a systematic review on the African American population. The title of our review is, Does Education Work? Examining the Impact of SIDS Risk Reduction Education in the African American Population. Our specific question was, in African American mothers, does SIDS education in the healthcare setting compared to healthcare settings that don't provide SIDS education reduce behaviors that increase SIDS risk? We decided to research this topic because throughout our nursing education, a common theme is that certain populations are more vulnerable to certain conditions, such as sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. According to the CDC, this is a term used to describe the sudden and unexpected death of a baby less than one year old in which the cause was not obvious before investigation. SIDS is a multifactorial condition resulting from overlapping biological and environmental risk factors. Infants are at a higher risk for SIDS if they sleep on their stomach, are born male, sleep with things in the crib such as pillows, blankets, toys, co-sleep in the same bed with a parent, sleep on soft surfaces, become overheated during sleep, or if they are exposed to cigarette smoke both in the womb and in the living environment after birth. According to the most recent update from the U.S. Department of Human Services Office of Minority Health, African Americans have had over two times the SIDS mortality rate as non-Hispanic whites. It's not entirely known why African Americans in particular are at such a high risk of SIDS, but contributing factors may be due to cultural preference of placing an infant to sleep on their stomach, general racial disparities that are already prevalent in industrialized modern medicine, and beliefs that one cannot prevent something that has no definitive cause. However, there is, it is important to note that there currently is no genetic testing prior to death to test susceptibility of an infant for SIDS. We analyzed six articles of original published work in this review. Levels of evidence of these articles ranged from level two to level six on the evidence hierarchy, which includes both quantitative and qualitative studies. Five out of the six articles examined deemed that education provided to African Americans regarding SIDS risk factors and risk reduction was relatively unsuccessful in that either risk behaviors increased following the education provided to African Americans or there were reports of skepticism about preventing a condition that has no definitive cause when in reality, as previously stated, it is said to be a result of overlapping biological and environmental risk factors that contribute to the development of SIDS. Article 6, as shown in the table, demonstrates the only study that we found in which resulted in a successful outcome. This study was conducted at a WIC program, which stands for Women, Infants, and Children, and consisted of small group teachings with family members other than the primary caregivers included in the dissemination of the information. Furthermore, when the educator was a trusted member of the African American community themselves, it yielded better results. These results included that more African Americans reported knowledge of safe sleep recommendations following the short teaching interventions. Overall, through our search for the evidence, there was a surprising lack of research done on this population regardless of the known disparities that exist among African Americans in healthcare. We expanded our search beyond the recommended five-year publication date in order to find information relevant to the PICO question. As a result of this, a large portion of the articles analyzed in this review are not as current as they could or should be. Con constantly changing social, cultural, and educational standards may impact the application of such older research today. However, this research is the most pertinent and constantly used research that is available about African-American SIDS risk reduction education. 
As a result of the evidence examined, we found that majority of the studies analyzed in this review showed that the SID education provided was not effective in reducing SIDS risk behaviors. And according to the research articles we studied, this was in part due to overall mistrust of strangers outside their community, skepticism, and word of mouth from trusted family or community members. Due to previously stated lack of research on the African American population and SIDS risk education, we thought of possible research studies to aid further research of this population and this topic. A possible re future research study should include the implementation of African American community members that are well known and trusted, such as church members, nurses, or neighbors that are well educated on the topic of SIDS risk prevention in order to provide a trusting relationship between the participants and the educator, which could promote greater application of SIDS risk reduction education. Another potential study design that would be beneficial to this population would be the use of a CRIP program. This could be funded by government reserves, grants, etc., and would include a crib or box, like a cardboard box, with a hard mattress inside. This could start the discussion on safe sleep practices because unsafe sleep conditions are one of the most prominent risk factors of SIDS, as mentioned earlier. The, the program could also help build rapport with subjects which could influence greater acceptance of the information presented to them. Another positive aspect of the CRIB program would be that it takes away financial barrier from the subject. This study would not only provide the information needed for safe infant care practices, but also the tools to perform them, making it as easy as possible for the participants to use the information learned. In addition to further research needs, nurses can incorporate this research into their practice by sharing the research on the risk factors for SIDS and the multifactorial aspect of the condition within multiple settings. Nurses are prevalent in office settings, public health departments, hospitals, free clinics, health fairs, community outreach programs, and schools, etc., which would allow for a diverse audience to present this information to. Nurses also have a majority of the contact with patients in the healthcare setting, allowing a large opportunity for information to be spread. Additionally, nurses are well known for establishing trust through building rapport with their patients, which encourages greater utilization of the teaching provided. By using nurses as a vector to distribute the important information pertaining to SIDS, Nurses can be proactive in preventing increased SIDS risk behaviors. Simultaneously, this can reduce SIDS rate by methods such as educating on certain risk factors pertaining to sleep location, sleep position, temperature, use of soft bedding and material, and exposure to environmental toxins such as cigarette smoke. Furthermore, nurses can clarify to the American African population that SIDS is thought to be due to undetectable brain cell abnormalities in combination with the previously mentioned risk factors. This would help express the multifactorial aspect of SIDS risk and prevention. This concludes our SURF presentation. Thank you for listening.